So my name is Joe Stanley and I'm the head of sustainable farming here at the GWCT Allerton project. The GWCT, the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust, it is a research-led conservation organisation. So it has a huge range of different things that we look into, uh, everything from things like invertebrates on farm to the best way to create uh, and establish habitats for the benefit of you know, farm, uh, farmland wildlife, wildlife across the whole farmed landscape and wider afield as well. We do with everything from the uplands to the lowlands, from Scotland to Wales to England. Uh, you know, so we really are uh, working across the whole of the UK, uh, essentially using high quality research through our you know, strong team of specialist scientific researchers to really try and deliver some of the answers to some of the most pressing questions that we have as a society today. So the GWCT Allerton project is a research and demonstration farm. We've been established since 1992 and what we're trying to demonstrate here and what we believe we can demonstrate is that you can have a thriving natural environment alongside uh, modern, productive and profitable food production. You know, we know that, uh, that we have huge targets as a, as a nation in order to hit biodiversity, uh, climate, uh, water and air targets. These are all subjects that we've been covering here and researching uh, for more than 30 years. We are a working commercial farm, uh, but we also have a full-time team of research scientists here who have spent the last 30 plus years really uh, trying to find the solutions to some of the biggest questions that we're asking of our farmed landscape today. Because ultimately, you know, we have to be able to feed a growing global population, but we have to be able to do that more sustainably than has previously been the case. Otherwise, we are going to continue to exceed our planetary boundaries and we're going to gift a, a really poor inheritance to future generations. <laughs> Hi, I'm Saya Harvey. I'm the farm manager here at the Allerton Project. The farm is 250, 260 hectares of arable, about uh, 60 hectares of, of grass, and then 20 hectares of, of mature woodland. So really lovely sort of mixed habitat landscape with, with lots of different types of, of wildlife opportunities here. So, so regenerative agriculture is, is all about managing soils. So it's about keeping a, a cover on the soils throughout the year. If you have active growth in the soil, you have roots growing and plants growing in the soil, then your microbiology is active and, and that is producing a more healthy soil, sequestering more carbon and sort of retaining soil structure. Really good over winter, for example, we've had lots of serious rainfall events if you've got something growing in the ground then you're going to have less soil erosion less sort of water runoff so it's about soil cover it's about um, re reducing disturbance of the soil and uh, and that's where a drill like this comes into into it so you can actually use this drill directly into stubble from the previous year uh, and, and drill a crop into that without having to plow or cultivate or anything like that. That isn't always suitable. Sometimes on, particularly on heavy clay soils like we have, we have to do some cultivation to create the right kind of conditions for growth. But generally, if you can move away from that constant turning the soil over and the more conventional approach of, of ploughing and then power harrowing to, to kind of uh, bash it all back down into a seed bed, then, then you're moving towards this sort of general aim of, of retaining carbon and, and building um, building organic matter in the soil and then the third aspect of, of regenerative farming is is just being more sustainable and reducing your inputs reducing fungicides not using insecticides for example so on the farm here we've not used insecticides for uh, five years now and we're you know sort of really keen to not do that especially from the game management point of view because invertebrates are so important for, for game birds but also for songbirds as well. Okay. 
So before I make any decisions about about cultivations or drilling, I'll walk around the field and dig uh, seven or eight soil pits, have a look at the at the soil conditions uh, around the field, uh, and then decide exactly what uh, what we need to do to create the right growing conditions for the crop. You basically dig a um, spit of soil and and have a look at the soil structure. And actually, this soil is in great great condition. It was cultivated with a time cultivator a few months ago and the weather has really allowed that soil structure to develop so dried it dried out really well in the summer and and then it's re-wetted and you can see we had a downpour of rain about half an hour ago um, and this soil has taken that rain really really well it's not too splodgy um, and it's actually really breaking down nicely I wouldn't want to drill yet but it won't be long before that dries out. So this is our research lab. We've got an oven over here for measuring the biomass of all the different plants we cut down and for drying our soil so we can work out how much water's in there. We've got our, our soil grinding machine and our plant grinding machine to make our samples nice and uniform for testing of nutrients. Uh, we've got all the bags from all our sampling we've been doing. It's harvest time, so we've got lots at the moment. And then we've got little pots, little pots of soil everywhere. These ones are going to go into a furnace so we can measure the amount of carbon in the soil. We do a lot of soil science in here because soils are really fundamental to everything that we do here. Farming is really about the soil health. If you have a healthy soil, you're very likely to produce healthy crops, profitable crops, you're able to feed the world. A healthy soil is a biodiverse soil. 59% of the Earth's biodiversity is believed to be underground in the soil. That includes about 90% of the world's fungi is in the soil, about 40% of the bacteria is in the soil. Um, and it's those living parts of the soil that make a soil function and we need really healthy soils to do all those important functions that we need soils to do for us. It doesn't just grow crops, it can also purify pollution, it can help infiltrate water to mitigate from flooding and it can store carbon, about a third of the world's carbon is stored in our soils. So it's really important for climate change as well. The way that soil breaks into nice little aggregates, that aggregation structure is due to the living part of the soil. So things like worms, when they move through the soil, they release mucilage, which will stick soil particles together and make it easier to form these aggregates, which is what we call the soil structure. And by having a structure made up of aggregates and pore space, which is what we call the um, air gaps between the soil particles, that means water and air can move through the soil, which means roots can move through the soil and roots can get hold of water and air, which they need to live. And by getting hold of water and air, roots can produce grass. So if you didn't have worms breaking down the soil, producing good soil structure, you probably wouldn't be able to grow as nice grass, crops, and other plants that keep us all alive and well fed. The thing that the earthworms don't like is disturbance. But if you're a farmer and you do things like cultivate, plough the fields, that can have a, a big impact on some of the worm species, particularly the bigger, long-lived ones take longer to recover from that kind of thing. So the less disturbance you do to the soil, the bigger your earthworm population is likely to be. So it's often said that we are in a biodiversity crisis here in the UK. Now it really depends what metrics you're looking at, but I think what we can all agree on is that the general trend of biodiversity in the UK since the 1970s has been on a downward trajectory. Now of course what we have to do is find solutions uh, to the problems that we're facing when it comes to biodiversity. How can we square the circle of increasing the amount of biodiversity in our landscape? 70% of the UK landscape is farmland, so ultimately farmers have to be at the core of reversing that downward trend in biodiversity. So for example, when we're talking about biodiversity, 
uh, by taking the less productive parts of our farm out of agricultural production and planting things like uh, what we would call uh, winter bird seed mixes, i.e. crops that we're growing purely to provide seed for our farmland bird populations through the winter, we can not only take loss-making parts of the farm out of production and be paid to do so, but we're also then having a really positive benefit on our farmland bird populations. So the three-legged stall is a concept developed by the Game and Wildlife Conservation Trust and it is just that. Imagine a stall with three legs, so one representing habitat, one re representing supplementary feeding and one representing predation management. The theory being that you need to have all three present to get successful species recovery. Supplementary feeding is as it suggests, it's putting feed out manually. But then you may have seen elsewhere on the state farmland feeders, which are actually on a post and raised above ground, meaning that the, the, the birds that use the feed on the ground wouldn't be using those. So we put out supplementary feed, not just for the purposes of game management, but also when the shooting season has ended from February right the way through to June, July, when the more natural feed sources arrive within the hedges, the field margins, um, the cover and the habitat that we provide. So supplementary feeding, absolutely essential to provide that food source all the year round, not just for game management purposes. So the best place to be when looking at habitat in terms of the three-legged stall is here at Allerton. So connectivity is absolutely huge. So everything from the hedges to the field margins to the pollen and nectar mixes. It could be cover crops within fields as well that provide soil cover for farming, but also those areas for birds. It's protection from predators, brood nesting, um, covers on the ground, and also winter feed values in those mixes that can provide additional supplementary feeding um, through those hungry winter months. Predation management for me has always been a little bit about awareness. It's an awareness that it's a necessary part of species recovery um, and game management in order to protect farmland birds, to protect songbirds. And I guess for me, I'm always happy to go out and conduct predator management on the ground because it's such a necessary part of the three-legged stool. So predation management is conducted here on the Allerton project. And as a result of the application of that stool, we saw an increase of 102% recovery in farmland birds and songbirds on Allerton. So how can you play your part? Well, one of the, the key things I would hope for is that uh, we look to, as a society, uh, you know, support more British agriculture. What we can't have happen is essentially that we take significant areas of the UK farmed landscape out of food production and then merely offshore that food production footprint abroad to places with, uh, with worse environmental statistics and credentials. We can't continue with this global race to the bottom on cost where uh, we're always looking for the cheapest of everything. Ultimately, if something is too cheap to be true, that's because there is an external cost somewhere else. And when it comes to our food system, that is generally the environment. So if we want to actually bequeath a more positive, sustainable, hopeful future to the next generation, then we need to actually act today. So please do support uh, more sustainable British food production, and we can deliver you know, both food and the environment side by side. We just need your support in order to do that.